summarizing what the Lashem spoke about last week, uh, discussing the whole issue about whether or not that that the that the nature is such that if we have to change the order of things, that we that God or not us, but God decides that He wants to he wants to perform a miracle, whether or not that it's a problem for nature itself, because as Alshir brought down and explained uh, previously that. But everything in the physical world has a as a, a ministering angel overseeing it, and all the all the blessing, all the light that comes down to the world comes down through the ministering angel, and he's responsible for the teva, the nature, the character of a specific thing, a blade of grass, a mountain, a tree, people, whatever the case may be, and that the nature is fixed, and that once in a while God decides, for whatever reason, for historical purposes, that he's going to he's going to change the um, the nature of something or perform a miracle and that means cutting off the shefa, cutting off the flow, cutting off the light that comes down to that specific thing and that's painful for the Tsar and that uh, he doesn't want to do it but, but God made a contract a contractual agreement with that thing at the beginning that you can't complain when the time comes that the Jewish people have to cross the sea and the sea has to act in the way it's not the way that seas normally act you can't complain because that's the reason why I, I made it in the first place and you have to agree to that and uh, that's the way the Alshech leaves it. The, the, the Leshem asked the question that how is it possible because we have other Midrashim that seem to contradict that, I, that idea that not only did Gabriel was, was not only was Gabriel willing to go down and act in the place of water even though Gabriel, the, the angel Gabriel is in charge of fire and the nature of fire is to of course make more fire to burn things but Gabriel suggested and even volunteered to go down and act in the place of water and put the fire out when uh, Nebuchadnezzar put Azari, Michelle, and uh, Hanani into the fiery furnace. And from this we see that not only is a Tanai not necessary, but that uh, the physical world waits to sanctify the name of God by changing its nature. And in fact, itself, it itself is, is used, what he calls it, a nes p'toch nes, a miracle instead of a miracle, because not only was Gabriel acting uh, in, a, in a way that was contrary to its nature, but it volunteered on its own to do that, so to speak. Anyhow, so it's, we'll go on a little further as the other lesson explains the entire the entire issue. But the main thing over here is that the physical world, or at least how the lesson comes out, the physical world is not fixed. It's not uh, it's not uh, in any form per se that that is is not pliable. On the contrary, it's quite flexible because the entire physical world exists based upon the will of God. And whatever the will of God is, that's what the thing is going to be. If God wants the water to, to maintain itself and between the shores and it can't split, things like that, that's the way the water is going to be. The moment God decides and he wills that the water should split and act contrary to its nature and save the Jewish people, supposed to drown them, so the water is going to respond that way too, quite happily, because that's what God wants. The, the, the physical world wants to respond uh, to the will of God as God wants it. So, so Leshem explains, he says, Amnon, Alpidar Chenu Haniskele El Anav Beis, based upon what we said previously in the second section of the day, is Bar Hakol Al Nechod. We've answered everything correctly. Kine, Gam Im Kol Chesik Ateva Vatukva. Even though nature seems to be so strong and so fixed and so static, Asher Hikari Mutzak, Ve'ein Bukech Lashum Niva Lazuz Oisa Mim Kaima. But it's like it's like found. It's like it's a, it's like it's built in. It's so so, so uh, fixed that no physical creation is able to to move it to change it in any way, right? That's the way it appears to be to us for sure, even a little bit. Kemosh Kesav, as the pasuk says, Yisad Aretz Al Mechonea Al Baltimot Olam Ve'ed, right? That the world was founded upon its its place. That's uh, it's Mechon. It's you know the way it is, and nothing can move it even a little bit. Can change it even a little bit. He may kachuskak v'tukva asher yisad ba hayotz bereishis yisbarach shemo. Nevertheless, all that strength and all that ability and all that fixedness, so to speak, which was founded with by the one who made creation, God Himself. May His name be blessed. He may who rak lepulaseya v'todaseya. That's that's only in terms of what it's here to do. In other words, when a rock was created, when, the, when, when cement is, is made based upon rock or whatever, and water, whatever exists in Mysibratius, there's a specific purpose within Mysibratius, within creation, that, that basically that whatever God made is there for a specific purpose. 
And in terms of that purpose, that everyday purpose is here to fulfill, it's fixed. It, that's the way it's going to behave. Rock is going to be strong. If you hit it with a, with a, with a hammer, it's going to chip off. It's not going to act like, like mud or dirt, things like that, because that's not what it's here to do. There's, there's sand to do things like that. The, everything in the physical was made in a specific way to function in a certain way and as a, a certain techuna, a certain character, a certain uh, uh, reality about it, and that can't be changed. And whatever is going to be produced from it is going to be the same way as well. If you take sand and you produce and put water in it, so the, the, the mud, the result, is a product of the sand. And the sand has the ability to bind together with the water to produce the mud in the end. And that's the way it's meant to be. So whatever God wants the physical world to be and to function, that's going to be fixed. And in every day, sense. No one's going to be able to change that. Not No human being. But it's a Lamar. Mashira'arit somiyiz baroshim aloitzim emeinu pu'ulas tiriim well, this, this means to say that which God saw fitting to take out from the thing itself natural natural actions, natural results, the told us to be natural uh, products, natural byproducts. In this, nature has a tremendous power, tremendous ability to be able to produce these things and to remain that way. And we also see the world is organized in a very natural, a very orderly manner. That you take the water, you put it in the sand, you produce the mud, or you take paint and you produce paint. Whatever you produce, and there's a saying to things that you have to follow to actually produce things. So you want to make a table, to cut, you know, grow the tree, cut down the tree, refine you know, the wood, set it down, until you finally make a table. A, that's the way God made the world in terms of the natural reality of what it's going to produce. Uh, the Asher Eim Lahosi Fe Eim We can't we can't add to that Seder and we can't take away from that Seder. That's the way the world is, it was made. That's the way God intends the world to function that way. And we can't change it. We're always manipulating. God is a boyra, meaning that God can make something from nothing. And man is a yotzer. Yotzer is something that it makes takes that which exists and, and creates from that thing. So all you're basically doing is manipulating. We're always working within the laws of nature. We can't break or bend the laws of nature. As much as we try to understand them and you know, whatever we do, even the magic that we perform, so to speak, magic tricks or whatever the case may be, whatever the world is doing or is being used for, by definition, it cannot do that specific thing if God did not build into the nature of that thing that specific thing that could be done or produce that specific thing. And we can't change that. When Amnam calls there, all of this, he ne haya rak beim shahaya with signings bro shemo, lam si osa, let's search mitzi osa. The vat. That's only talking the case when that the thing is only meant to exist in its natural form as it was made for creation. It's got a purpose, this is by separation, as long as it's fulfilling its purpose based upon the original intention, nothing's going to change. And for that which it was made to do, right? Uh, wood producing, you know, that you can light it, make fire, right? Fire was meant to come from wood from the beginning. Even though if you look at a piece of wood, you wouldn't see any fire, what would indicate that it would burn and create heat and warmth and light, things like that, you wouldn't know. But once you bring a match to that that log and you light it and it begins to burn and produce produce the fire and the light and the warmth, whatever else is or destructive powers, that was built into the, the wood from the beginning of time. That's what God meant. It was a potential that man happened to discover. But not for any other purpose that not, may not be noticeable, Mukhuvan Ba. That's intended in that thing. In other words, we look at the physical world, you know, the, the trees and the grass and the ground and whatever the case may be, water, we look at it and we watch it functioning and we experiment with it and we assume that based upon the things that we can see, that's all the potential it has. Because that's all it's meant to do. You know, water extinguishes. Who would ever think that water could be used to light something? Right? Fire burns. Who would ever think that fire could be used to put out fire in the air? It's not, it's not a purpose that we can see built into the thing itself. Right? So, for example, when the famous story of Chini Medosa, when uh, his, his daughter comes and says to him on you know, Shabbos night that, Abba, I made a mistake between the vinegar and the oil. I lit the vinegar by accident in place of the oil because I guess they look you know, alike, the same type of bottle. It reminds me of the story personally that, uh, but uh, the, you know, she tried to light the, you know, she lit the vinegar by accident. She realized after the fact it was already Shabbos. 
when she lit the candle. She couldn't put it out. She came running to her father and said, Abba, Abba, we know, I made a mistake. I lit the vinegar, the vinegar by mistake, you know. So the problem over here, I mean, this is not nature. Something very bizarre is happening over here. And he answers back with the famous answer, what's your problem? You know, the one who made, so the one who said that oil should burn can also say that vinegar should burn and vice versa. But if you go to school, you, you take science and chemistry, it's not built into the chemistry how, that, how it's possible that should be the case because carbon atoms burn. But the reality is that we know they burn because they burn. Not because we thought they should burn before we got there, but rather someone lit a piece of wood one day and it burned and we noticed that uh, carbon you know, you know, is, uh, is, is produced and also is that which is combustible. So we realized that from that point on, Onward, if you want to burn something, and you want it to be combustible, it should be made a certain way and made of a certain certain uh, material. But the reality is, is that that's a front. That's just a veil. God's using the chemistry, the nature of that specific thing to make us believe that that's the reason why the thing is burning. But the reality is that God's making it burn. And when Chanin Mendoza is telling his daughter that if you believe that oil should burn because intrinsically oil burns and not because God is telling it to burn and the vinegar does not burn because vinegar does not burn intrinsically, that's your belief, then basically this is called a miracle. You're going beyond the boundaries of nature. But on my level, where I realize that everything is a function of the, the Ratzon of Hashem, a function of the will of God and that oil only burns because God says it has to burn and vinegar doesn't burn because God said that vinegar should not burn, right? That he can switch it around just like that, in which case, you know, it's the same thing. It's, it's all called nature by me, because miracle is nature, and nature is the miraculous way, because it's all a function of God's wills. We'll see, he explains later on. But uh, I remember one year of Shabbos, when I was actually setting up the candles to, to light, and the happened to be one of the few times where the company that produced the oil also produced the vinegar we had in the house in the exact same bottle, when they were labeled differently, of course, but I didn't pay attention to that because every week I use the same bottle to put the oil in, so I just automatically poured the uh, into, the, into the, the little glass thing. And the first night I poured, I realized it was clear liquid. It was not yellow like the oil, but it was actually vinegar. And uh, you know, I, part of me said, light it, light it, see if it burns, see if it burns, you know? It didn't go so far. I wasn't so chutzpah to do that, but uh, it was certainly a very tempting situation. Anyhow, he says, the Azine Hayapula so is brought from a rock al derch pu'ulas b'nei adam. Right? When there's no pressing need to use the physical world in any other way than it was intended to, to be used from, from my separation onward, then God acts like a human being in this respect, which is what? Right? She'ach gamar pu'ulasoi. After man finishes what he's doing, he, he builds a house, he walks away. Right, Anglo or Shaykh's Imaklov. There's nothing there's no real pressing connection anymore between this table and the carpenter who made it. Right? Where's the carpenter today? The carpenter's someplace else. I don't even know if he's alive anymore. You know, and, and he went away. The table's still here, functioning perfectly exactly as the table is supposed to function as he intended to the moment that he finished the table in the first place. Right? There's no difference. Likewise, God made my separations, he made creation. He made it in a way that uh, it appears as if it's an automatic pilot. An autopilot as if God has walked away because he built into the thing itself of a certain nature and it's functioning according to the specific nature that God wills to, to have. So therefore it looks as if God's walked away and the thing's running by itself. Of course God runs everything every single second as the, as the rabbis point out, Nefer Shechayim explains that every single second God is recreating creation. Every single second is creation happening all over again, which means always going to be a function of the will of God. But at least for appearance sake, it appears to us as if God made it and then walked away. That's why people get fooled and duped into believing that the world's an autopilot, which of course is not the case, but that's the way, that's the way it appears. But certainly by a human being, when he built something, the existence of the thing itself is not dependent upon the person remaining, remaining attached to it, unless, of course, you build it that way. If you decide to be one of the columns holding the front of the house, right, and then you walk away, the other going to collapse. That's a different story. We're talking about a normal situation. You make something, and you walk away from it. Writing books, for example, always uh, always amazes me that you, you work so hard in the book and put your your mind and your heart and your even you know your, your soul into writing a book, 
And then about uh, three, four months later after it's finished, it's like you never wrote it. There's almost no connection. I, I wrote that, you know, I look, see the words, I, it must have been me because I remember this, but there's no, there's no connection in the book certainly does not depend upon your existence. I mean, how many authors have gone and left this world and the books that remain? Ach be'emes, in truth, harei haya puloso yizbarach shuma bakol metzias ha In truth, God is really functioning inside the reality of all that exists. Lo lekevanas metziasa levad, but um, not for, you know, only for that specific purpose was made for. Lam si osa kemoshehi l'shras don't think that whatever God made, that's the, way, that's the only way it's meant to exist for, forever from that point onward. But really, it's here to be elevated to a higher purpose of existence. That's fitting to God, to the thing itself, according to God's ratzah. You know, like we look at the physical world, we have no idea that, that things have potential to be used for, for something very innovative that goes way beyond the tachum, the boundary of that specific thing that we, that we thought we know to have. Sometimes we call it uh, industrial uh, engineering where we can find new applications for things we never thought, but they're still working within the realm of the physical. But, but the, you know, the sea, for example, is a perfect case in point where it's split when it had to. It's not something that industrial engineering is going to be able to arrange without building walls to hold the water back. But the sea had an additional purpose that elevated it and elevated all of water by, by going against its assumed nature and splitting. And the result was the Jewish people, it became a vehicle for freedom as opposed to kill them. Asher hu ne'alami And that secret purpose is hidden away from all creation. We don't know what everything will be used for in the end. As it says in Yeshaya, Ayin la rasa elokim No eye has seen but you. He was just talking about the future, Lasi Lava, but it, it's, a, it's being used in this context, referred to the hidden, deeper meaning of all that exists will have a purpose beyond that which we perceive at this present time. omed kol tamid that everything that exists in creation exists from the beginning of its, of its existence until the end of time uh, in, a, in a direction based upon the fulfillment of its ultimate purpose, which may not be you know, noticeable to, to us, but it's, no, it's known to God and built into the thing itself specifically. Right? Very important. That God never, ever removes his providence from that specific thing, God's always watching everything and, and taking care of everything. Whatever we're talking about the physical world is always functioning based upon the way God is directing and guiding it and overseeing it. Whether we're talking about the maintaining of its natural state, that's God, the entire time, He's doing that, right? He's the one that, that, that's making it function that way, even though day after day after day the sun rises pretty much the same way as God doing it. Or, Bishinuya, right? When, the, when the, sun, the sun stood still for Yeshua to fight the battle, right, and to win. So uh, that was God too. Whether we're talking about the natural state of existence for something, we're talking about the miraculous state of existence for something that's always going to be God and He's on Hagi, his, his running the world. Hakol rak la'oisa hakavanas hataklisa is based upon the ultimate purpose this thing has in creation, in the master plan of creation. Vaharei omed hanhagis kolateva kula tamid rak betanai. Right? And the everything stands, the way that things exist and function in this world, naturally speaking, is always going to be only on tonight. Meaning that you can be water and you can remain inside your shores and do nothing else but, you know, lap up the shore and, you know, sink ship and, you know, whatever thing doesn't happen in the, the water. The entire time I say this, that's what I want you to do. But the moment that I have an alternative purpose for you, right, or fire, whatever the case may be, and I want to do something that's beyond, you know, what normally happens, you got to do it. That's the way I want you to function. In kiyuma, hu yafel lafit tachlis mechuvan ba az mizahega bikiyuma. Right? If existing in this present state of reality satisfies the ultimate 
master plan for creation and nothing needs to be changed in the time being. So then God leaves things alone. The, 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 the trees grow naturally and the wood functions like wood and water functions like water and everything follows a natural course of action. As long as it, what's going on right now fits the bill for the master plan of creation. The im love, if not, if for some reason history has a demand, has a demand that requires a change of teva, as mispehek kolabria beshinu teva ubetula. Right then, what happens basically is that creation will change its nature, nature will be changed, and the laws of nature will be battled, they'll be, they'll be obliterated, they'll be canceled, be overwritten for the time being. Shohub and hagen nisis, and this is what we call the the, the miraculous way of running the world, Hashalel kol teva vehi chutz teva, right, it, it basically cancels out nature, it's a, it's a ton of nature, or the mountain of teva, the gami, and, and beyond, we call supernatural. You know, there's a lot of focus today, even in the Western world, on supernatural, all these, all these movies that have come out in the past 10, 15, 20 years that deal with uh, supernatural realities, they have different names for it, they tried to naturalize it, but the reality of all of it is, is that people know that there's something paranormal about about creation. There's something supernatural about creation. There's a tremendous fascination with how nature can can function in ways that go beyond the everyday limits that we seem to see and be bound by. But the reality is is that we we, we sense that we we realize that uh, there must be more to life than meets the eye, and that's certainly the case. And when that happens, then God performs a necessary miracle to make it happen. Vihi and it flows for that specific time period. Right from God Himself. This specific little statement over here is a very important insight into to what a miracle is and how a miracle actually functions. Because He's saying for the entire duration that uh, the miracle is taking place. God is the one making it happen. God makes everything happen. What's the difference over here? But, in this case, there's no lavush. There's no clothing. There's no veil of nature. Meaning that Teva is also going to be the light of God. The difference is going to be is the light's going to be so filtered and, and go through different, you know, different, system, different levels of filtering until it eventually gets to the point where it can, it can allow all of the existence to exist but in such a way that you can't necessarily see the hampered of God in that which it was, is functioning or, or, or was created, right? But a miracle is when God allows the light responsible for all of creation to skip steps, not to go through all the sphere, through all the different levels of filtering. And as a result of that, the light comes down much more pure, right? The, an example might be of a, uh, let's say, a father who's supporting his son overseas. Right? Son's gone to Shiva, something you know, and he needs money. But he also wants the son to learn independence. He wants the son to, to not just that, but also to realize that his father is the one who's helping him out and to make an effort to thank him. So what does the father do? The father does not simply write a check to his son and say, you know, here's a thousand dollars for the next few months, signed, you know, Abba, you know, love Abba and, and send it off, which case the son gets the check in the mail, he says, you know, calls his father right away, got the check, thank you so much, and uh, I'll try to use it responsibly. Right, but uh, you don't get that last line too often from from the Shiva book. But but that's the intention. That's the idea. And uh, but let's say the father decides, no, I want my son, to, you know, to to think that he's more on his own. So he needs the money. He needs to survive. Without my money, he's not going to survive. But what I'll do instead is I'll send the money to somebody else where he lives. He's living in, in Yerushalayim. So I'll I'll send it to someone in Yerushalayim. I'll tell my son I'm not going to support him for the next few months. Go get a job. Right, and he'll get a job working for somebody who I will pay to hire him. Right, so really, he's not really working that hard, first of all. And whatever money he's making, it's more than he actually deserves. And they wouldn't even be hired in the first place if I didn't give this specific person the money to hire him. Right, so what happens? The son gets the money via, you know, via another person, or you can put three more people in the, the chain of events. The son can't trace. I mean, money laundering kind of works the same way, but uh, this is a legal way of doing things. A nice way of doing, doing things as opposed to breaking the law. The more people you insert, the less traceable you, the source of money is going to be. So, you know, the son decides, one did a track down. He says to the man, why, why did you hire him in the first place? Why are you paying me so much? And he gets through one person, the second person, eventually traces back to his father, and realizes it was always his father's money in the first place. That would be called Teva. That's the way God works for Dech Teva. He's funneling his light through different, different attributes, different, different uh, systems, 
to come down to us is more filtered. We can't always trace that light back to God. A nais would be the father personally handing over the check or at least mailing it to him in such a way the son knows this can only come from a father and he has to therefore take his father direct. That's more the way a miracle actually works. So he says, uh, his love shoes, but there's no clothing of nature in this thing whatsoever. It's a new thing completely. Right? That the actual miracle is a brand new creation, a brand new act that God has, has brought to existence for the entire duration. The nace, the miracle is taking place. It's like a brand new creation. It's not, it's not, you know, what we're saying here is, what we spoke about last week, that, that the, a, a miracle is not something built into creation back at the beginning, but we just couldn't see it until now. But rather, the creation was made this specific way. The splitting of the sea was not put into my Bereshis, but rather at the time the Jewish people were crossing the sea, a brand new creation came into being because of the will of God, and that was the water should be able to split, divide, and allow the Jews to cross over. That's the way that is explaining it. The Harei Nimsa, from this we see, Shekal Chuzka V'tukva, all the strength and the forcefulness that type of nature itself, Shamayin L'Shaleya Ein L'Hosu V'Menu V'Ein L'Guru, which we said, that no one can add to or take away from, it's just a fixed reality. That's only talking with respect to created beings, like us. Whose foundation is in her, you know, and from it, so to speak. We come from that same world, so we can't change the world from which we came. We're part of it, we're bound by the same laws. We're a function of the, the same reality, the same laws. Amnam but since it's always under the hashkacha of God, he's outside the system. This is a function of him. The other way around, right? It's only for the sake of God's uh, final intention for this thing. He gufa. He gufa. But all, you know, all of all of her, all of nature, and all that which was created from her, including us and everything else in the physical world, right? None of it has a fixed foundation. In other words, in terms of that which comes from the natural world, it can't change the natural world. It's bound by the same laws that the, that the natural world are bound by is, is bound by as well. When it comes to God. Right, who's above everything, and everything's a function of his will. So, by definition, he can do whatever he wants with those things. He can change them at will. And everything, in terms of God Himself, is existing in terms. It's like it's what we call rafium. It's like it's flexible. It's not uh, it's gamish. It's it's not uh, it's not uh, any fixed reality. God is not, even though He seems to function by the rules of nature he created for the most part from a historical point of view, he also does break those rules too because those rules really you know, are made by him and he can do whatever he wants. Commotion with the Eev, it says an Eev, Toila Arts Oblima, God established the world on Blima, the word Blima means like nothingness, the word Blima, right, without anything, without substance, Vechein Shem Pasuk Yud Aleph, Amude Shemayim Yerufu, that the, the pillars of heaven are are soft and flexible. Ki lehem kulam yisod kiyum There's nothing in the physical world or the spiritual world, for that matter, is fixed when it comes to the will of God. When it comes to the will of man or the will of anything else in the physical world, it's 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 fixed. You can't change it. You can't add. You can't take take can't, can't take away. When it comes to the 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 ratzon of Hashbaruch Hu, comes to the will of God. Nothing. It's just the opposite. Nothing is fixed. V'chein sham test. The Matik Harim Velo Yadu, my Gis Eris and Koima, which Baruch Hu, you know, shakes, you know, moves the ground from its place, but Hula Oimer, the Cheres Velo Yisrach. Kemosh Yazav Hu Meshum, Shekovet Sonu Yibbehem, who rock the Kavanah Satakliso, Manhigosa, Osam, Tamid rock the Oisa Hakavanah. Because everything in the physical world, everything in the world itself, is according to the will of God, always 
in terms of the, the long-term master plan for creation, everything that fits in like a beast in the puzzle, and God knows that, we don't always understand that. The chain lo yasad lehen yasad kayim So therefore God did not give him such a fixed reality. Ela shetluim tami rak b'tsono, or b'tsaisei chaygei, b'tsaisei b'maygei, we say in Yom Kippur, right, that everything in God's hand, he's like the craftsman who, you know, who changes the form of something at will. Right? As we said before, all that God chose, chooses to do, He does. But Shemaim Ba'aretz on in heaven in Shemaim and on the land. But Yemim Vachol Tohemis in the seas and all the depths. Can just go up and measure Shmos Rabba. Shekavanahu Al Kol Shinui Hateva. That specific verse, that specific Medrash, its intention is specifically talking about the changes in the natural order of things, which of course is miracle. All the miracles. That's what it means. That all that God wants to do, He does. Right? All He desires to do, He does. Meaning that when God desires to change reality and make a miracle, He does it at will. Also, there's an eel regarding this. In his Gilel, Oyser Gedulus, and in Chekiv, it was Alimispar. God makes you know great things. With, um, you can't even you know, invest it. You can't even see how, how big they are. And wonder is beyond beyond counting. Now Kopani, who Kitav Vishnu, you know, just to to summarize over here to 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 bring it to a conclusion somewhat, that uh, whether we're talking about Tav, we're talking about the natural order of things, we're talking about miracle, right? Shuhu and Hagis and Tava and Hagis and Nisis, which is the divine providence of nature or the divine providence of miracle. Shneim Shekulim Heim. They're both equal, right? They're equal to each other, right? They counterbalance each other. The Asod Echad, the Shneim, there's one foundation for both of them. Shuhu Rak Ritzana Levad. The natural world and the miraculous world, they're both equal in this respect. They're both a function of the will of God. Only. Asher Lakvanes Atachlisis. And according to the, the long term master plan for creation. Am Atashu Ko Mesher Zman De Kimel Mazer He Nehu Hovo So Had Rason Ne Lamba. But the entire duration of Alom Mazer, history as we know it, is, is that that master plan or that final purpose for the thing we're talking about is hidden from us and not only to God. The Chenu Atta Kol Nahaga Hachitsonis Vagluyi. So therefore, at this stage of history, until Yemot the Mashiach and onwards into Chesemes with the resurrection of the dead, that uh, the basic Hanhagah, the basic running of the world is natural. And therefore, we, we look at the world and there's tremendous miracles taking place on a daily basis. As things happen, just our, our bodies functioning, the bracha of Asher Sar tries to focus you on the miracles taking place on an ongoing basis. You know, we go through the brook very fast, you make a shed call, you make a dama, you know, that we don't, you know, we really have to stop and think as Amalek to destroy us, to stop us from spiritually growing, he, he desensitizes us. He tries to make it that we lose appreciation for the miracle of life. You know, again, as uh, a doctor once told me, the first time that he had to deliver a baby it was, it was a phenomenally awesome event. You know, it was like, he was the, the doctor on call that night delivering the baby and he asked him what was it like it was, oh, it was awesome, it was absolutely tremendous you know, and the six months later I said to him is the magic still there? you know, you still feel that awe oh, he says no actually I just, I just pray right? they won't, they won't call me my people that, that they can deliver another baby another baby and it's like yeah, life loses its value as time the, the, the goal of a human being the goal of Torah with respect to human beings basically is to give us a system to allow us to become sensitive and to, and, to, and to give us a way of life to maintain that sensitivity. That's the bottom line. We have to maintain that sensitivity. Bruchas and benching and all the things that we do, we do in tefillah basically is a way to, to reconnect to that which we have to be sensitive about and then to, and to maintain that sensitivity. So if davening, if, if davening becomes just an obligation being fulfilled that we don't use davening properly, we're, we're throwing away extremely important opportunity to be able to be sensitive to the, the miracle of life and to maintain that sensitive, which of course is what connects us to Hashem and makes us merit worthy for, the, for life, just for a natural healthy life as well as the miracles 
when we have difficulties, right? But the, the goal of Torah and the name of the game and really what is supposed to distinguish the Jewish people from, from the rest of the nations of the world is that there's a heightened sensitivity to the miracle of life that we're supposed to live with, which unfortunately we struggle with today, and, and maintain and try and teach the rest of the world about. To be an Orla Goyim is to be that, to a large degree. And that's all a function of intelligence, of understanding, of enhancing one's intelligence, just like, for example, a person you know, who goes to university and learns about medicine. So every day he goes and learns more things, he becomes very sensitive to how the body works. After a while, it becomes a profession, he loses that sensitivity. So we have to be, you know, deprofessionalized, so to speak. We have to be people who are, are excited about life. In fact, when David and says the verse, Me'es Hashem Haisazos, right? You know, by name. This is a extremely, extremely important verse that, that has so much to teach you about life because the first explanation is more obvious than the second explanation, but the second explanation is probably more important because the ver the words basically mean that this is from God, that which is wondrous in our eyes, and and the, the simple explanation of that would mean that that when something happens in life that stands out and we say, wow, that's amazing, that shouldn't be like that, that's, that's bizarre, that's unique, right? That means it's overt divine providence. So that's what David Amalek is saying. When something happens that's nifla'ot, name, it stands out. Now, there shouldn't have been a recession, there shouldn't have been I'm going for so long, and this shouldn't have happened, that should have happened, right? So, you know, that bizarreness of life, which we call irony or hashkacha pratis, basically is showing us how God can work overtly in history. That's what it means. Me'es Hashem, right? Hai says this, this thing that happened is from God overtly, because everything comes from God, obviously, but this is overtly from God. How do I know? Ki 